Sahanavavatu, Sahanao Bunaktu, Sahavirian Karavavahai, Tejasvinavadi Tamastuma, Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti, 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 Shanti Om Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So previous time we spoke about the three modes of material nature and their qualities. <coughs> and we mentioned the different features of the three modes. So ignorance means destruction, passion means creation, goodness means maintenance mm. and pure goodness or transcendental level means pure spiritual existence yes there is no creation there is no destruction there is only maintenance and the separate souls don't have to maintain them because Krishna doesn't yeah they are spiritual nothing can happen to them they cannot degrade they cannot but there is some maintenance because I remember you said that there was someone that Krishna puts in charge for certain things and Yes, this in material world, different personality. In the spiritual, Krishna does everything through his energies. So the general character, ca characteristics, ignorance. How we can understand that sim someone is influenced by ignorance? He shows certain symptoms, qualities, foolishness, madness, illusion. Indolence, sleep, indecision, then passion, unlimited desires. One is ready to put intense endeavors, greed, attachment, fruitive activity. These are the qualities of passion. And goodness, real, uh, <coughs> purity, illumination. Happiness, self-satisfaction, freedom from sin, and real knowledge. These are the qualities of goodness. So then we spoke about the destination of death, that if someone is predominantly uh, under the influence of ignorance, he goes downwards. If someone is influenced by goodness, he goes upwards. And if someone is predominantly influenced by passion, he stays on the same level, on the earthly plane of existence. Here we are mainly influenced by passion and little ignorance and maybe not so little, it depends on which plane. <laughs> and some goodness, little bit goodness. That's after, right? The after we predominantly been in a certain mode. Yes, what will be our destination according to our life after this life. And then objects of worship. People in ignorance, they worship ghosts and spirits, black magic, and so on and so on. <coughs> Eating people. People in passion, they worship other people who are powerful. Uh, Yeah, demons. In goodness, people are worshipping demigods. And in transcendental platform, people are worshipping the Supreme Lord Krishna. Food. What was the food? The food in mode of ignorance. Tasteless. Stale. Decomposed. Unclean. Cooked more than three hours before eating. The best is, we were speaking that the best is to cook something and eat it immediately. Or, if you're going to leave it for later, at least eat, eat it this day. It's not the best if one eats food which is from yesterday, from two days ago, from three days ago. Because it's mainly under the mode of ignorance. So it, it will influence our consciousness in this way. So like meal prepping? 
if you if you make your nose like for the week and you put it in your refrigerator, that's considered an emote of ignorance. Mm. So how does that affect your consciousness if you eat that way? You will feel foolish, illusioned, you feel inertia, indolence, sleep, wow. you won't be very active. Wow. Because ignorance influences you in this way. Yeah. Yes, it sometimes happens, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But actually the best thing is if one cooks for the day. You know how many times you eat, uh, this means regulation. Mm -hmm. How many times you eat today, how much you eat. Mm -hmm. Always you can cook little extra, someone can come and you can give to him this, that. So ideally, or if something is left and you don't want to give it to the cats or dogs or whoever, okay, at least eat, eat, eat it next day morning and that's it, finish with it. Of course, we said that if the food is transcendental, if it's prasadam, if it's offered, although it may, may stay for one, two, three days, still it's considered pure because it's spiritual food. Mm -hmm. It's different if the food is offered. Okay. That's a useful explanation. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Offer it. Okay. Meat, fish, eggs, liquor, these are all foods in ignorance. Foods in passion, too bitter, too sour, too salty, too pungent, too rich, too dry, too hot causes pain, distress, and disease. So basically, everything which is too much, it's in the mode of passion. Something is too much. So it's too little um, ignorance? If it's tasteless, it's ignorance. If there is not enough. But if it's too much, it goes to passion, yes. Why passion? Because it will Goodness means balance, and the balance will get a good, there will be a good answer from the body. Because everything balanced, the body will take it nicely and easily. It will give us health. We are here now. But when something is too much, it creates, creates unbalanced. So gradually it will bring us to pain, suffering, and disease. Disease means unbalanced. Health means balance. All the diseases are coming from unbalanced lifestyle. Either the way how we eat or unbalanced in our uh, mind, too, disturb, too much disturbance in the mind, or unregulated schedule, not too regulated in our regime when we are eating, when we are sleeping, when we are working, when we are taking recreation, rest. All this is complete mess, so gradually it will bring you to, to disease. So that's why if the food is not balanced, it will create suffering in our life. And then the modes of goodness, nourishing, sweet, juicy, fatty, palatable, healthy, satisfying, pleasing to the heart. When you finish with the meal, you feel very happy, very satisfied. And not you finish and you're thinking, oh, it was not tasty at all. I don't like this. <coughs> Just finish them. Purifies. These foods purify. Give strength. So before you eat and after you eat, the best is you should feel more energized, more strong. Not the opposite. <laughs> if it's the opposite, something is wrong. Grains, milk, fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans. Yes, Natasha. Well, it reminds me of the Asian system, yin and yang. And they have the whole list of foods that are yin and the whole list of foods that are yang. And you're supposed to have like even speed and equal harmony. Balance. Like balance. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Like. For example, if we eat something, what, too pungent, for example, for a long time, you start having problem with your stomach. 
it's unavoidable because it's too. If it's a little bit punching, it's good. Like, for example, if you eat foods with, which are a little bit more fatty, like, for example, fried food, or in the food there is lots of, let's say, cream or cheese, these kind of things. To have some chili is good because this will help your body to digest the food. When the food is a little bit more rich, more heavy, some chili is good, some hot is good. But if it's too much, it will create problems in your stomach. So in this way, different too, too, too much creates problem. Only too sweet is not a problem. Except sweetness. But still we have to be careful with our teeth. Yes? <laughs> is it ever that your body, um, if there's already a pr uh, imbalance, and your body, like let's say, uh, if you're thirsty, that would be the imbalance of being uh, parched or mm -hmm. um, dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So then your body kind of like requests a certain, you know, maybe you're cold, you want some salt, or you have warm broth for certain foods. Yeah, you, we have to listen our body. Right, right. The but body is there ever this. that it's requesting that, and it, but it's to create a balance. And yes, it would be certain things are imbalanced. Yeah, the, bo the body is telling you what he needs. And sometimes it may say, give me a lot of salt. Not too much, but you would like kind of... More, more than the normal. Right. Just the body is telling you, no problem. But this is not too much. Because at the moment it's not too much. At the moment it's normal. The body just needs a little bit more. It's not overdoing it. Yes. But if you every day do, do this, mm -hmm. then there will be some reaction. That that's the idea. Well, you just that reminds me that they say um, sometimes the children are putting things in their mouth. I mean, like a toy or other things that their body's craving, like a mm -hmm. nutrient or something Substance that they need. Nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the body's craving it, that magnesium or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like for example, now the whole winter mainly people were eating mainly people were eating more like hot things cooked things it's natural mm -hmm. and now that the weather becomes warmer naturally you feel you want to eat more fresh things it's, it's a natural thing <laughs> you want to eat more salads more fruits more nice drinks like lassi or something like that water. yeah more water it's natural the body is telling you and once the temperature again go down in September, let's say, October, naturally again the body will say, okay, now it's time to switch on to the other parts of the year. Now again, more hot things, soups, and so on and so on. It's natural. And, and so the body is giving you signs. And it's just so beautiful. I see the whole Mother Nature, you know, Krishna, but the stuff that grows in the fall, pumpkins and squash, squash mm. that helps us with the season, and then like fresh watermelon and mangoes and citrus and to yeah that's the most natural right, actually if but you think about it all yes when it's grown it's by design. like for example the pumpkin which is kind of yellow red orange so basically the color of the fire so it brings some fire in the body it grows when exactly when the weather starts getting colder and the watermelon which is super cooling when we are eating watermelon, well, in well, the yeah. summer, when you want to well, cool down. So, <laughs> yes, in the West, in the West, no problem. You can get your yeah. strawberries in January <laughs> and they'll have a perfect shape. No taste, of course, but anyway, you can put little sugar and imagine that these are your strawberries. Anyway. It's also very green, though. The outside's very green. Oh, that's nice. Okay. It's cool. Green, green, green. It's cool. It's cooling a lot. Like m mango is heating a lot. Mango is heating a lot. That's why in India, if you are during the season of the mangoes, when the mangoes are super cheap and you want to eat every day ten because they are super tasty. 
after only two, three days you eat like 10 mangoes, your whole body will become covered with, uh, I don't know, what's the English word? Oh, like carrots do that, the Goose carotene in carrots. If you eat yeah, carrots, you turn orange. Your skin becomes damaged because of too much heat in the body. Oh. Or maybe some dots start appearing on your face, huh? Correct. Oh. Increases the heat of the body so much that immediately, when you have problem with the heat in the body, you see this by problems on your skin. Mm. That's one way. The other place is the stomach. But generally, it comes to skin. You have different skin diseases. That means there is some problem with the fire in your body, so you have to regulate it, decrease it a little bit. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> It's what I heard from people who know. I don't okay. actually know. So, food in pure goodness, spiritual food, prepared and offered to God with love and devotion, frees one from sinful reactions, protects one from contamination, induces higher consciousness. This is the benefit from eating prasadam. So now we continue. We have a few more categories. Charity in the different modes. What means to do charity and how to do this charity in the different modes? Charity means that you give something to someone. So now, when you give it, to who you give it and how you give it, it put charity in these different categories. <coughs> Ignorance. Charity is performed at an improper time, improper place, to unworthy person, like a drunkard or gambler, uh, without respect to the person. So everything is wrong, basically. Ignorant means you do it, you are ready to do the charity, but everything, the person is wrong, the place is wrong, the time is wrong, and your mood to do the charity is also wrong. Everything is wrong. Yes. Passion. Perform to get something in return, like honor, with a desire for fruity results, or in a grunging mood. Do you remember previous time we were speaking how many people are ready nowadays to make charity, but they are doing it, why? Because, let's say they are going to get free themselves from taxes, mm -hmm. or they, they, they'll get some Something. glory, mm -hmm. yeah, someone will glorify them, they'll put their name somewhere, or tell about them on the news. So they do, they do it, but as Mataji is saying, it's selfish. It's not uh, selfless. It can be to the right person, like someone may come even to the temple and give donation to Krishna. But actually he wants to see that, okay, my name will be, I want to put on the, on the wall, big sign that, okay, I donated this amount of money for this place. Which is okay, still is pious thing, but it's influenced by passion because you want to see how you are. Glorified. So like when the woman says that all the flowers are donated by someone that someone She can do no, not, just not the point is not she announces it. She can do but the person who is doing he should not want this. It could be done anonymously. Yes. Or it it was mentioned in a grunging mood. What means grunging mood? Moody. You are giving the money. You are giving it, but you don't want to give it. Mm. So while you are already giving them, in your mind you are thinking, mm, maybe I'm giving too much. Why am I giving? No, I have to give less. Mm. Grunging mood. You are not with happiness doing this charity. Mm. So that also shows passion. Why passion? Because you are so attached to whatever you have, to the result that you have. You don't want to share with in any with anybody else. So you are, no, oh, no, I have to do it. But actually you are so attached, you don't want to do it. So it creates this uh, pressure in your mind. Give and not give at the same time. This is passion. Could be the environment as well. Yes. Some people ask you for money and you're sitting down eating. Like it's just timing. You're kind of put on off at that point. Yes. Of the street already. Yes. This can be also that creates, you know, a feeling of like, already, because you feel that. Grunging. 
but like expectation. if you are if you are in sattva guna you'll be able to judge if the person is worthy if the place is worthy you'll do it like for example it's like here that i'm saying that it feels off and then you already are starting from a point that like but that was the point that we were speaking the previous time that if you are already under mainly uh, under the influence of the mode of goodness, sattva guna, naturally your feeling will be sattvic. And naturally you understand when to do the things and with what mood to do it. Mm. But if you are mainly influenced by passion, it will be other way around. What we mean? Yes. Naturally it will be other way around. Mm. Natur- the person the right person will come the right time and you say, Oh now it's not the time. Uh, next time. I'll do it next time. For me, it's passion. Because they don't see actually what's going on. They think they see, but actually they don't see. <coughs> like, for example, <coughs> we go with the books to distribute book, books outside. And we go to the people and we say, okay, these are spiritual books and you'll get so much benefit out of them. And we are telling them, just give a donation. We don't specify. We don't say you have to give $20 or $50. We just say donation. You can give one dollar and get a book which obviously costs more than one dollar. Mm. But still, just for for the spiritual benefit, just do it. And most of the people they are saying, No, I won't do it. Why? Because of ignorance, actually. Mm. You even if you are in a passion, you understand, oh, he is ready that he gets only one dollar for this book. Okay. It's worth it. I mean to go and get this book in the shop, I'll give $5. So, at least from material perspective, passion means, okay, I have some benefit out of it. So, okay, let me get it. Can give it to the present, to some friends, something. It's, it's a good deal. But most of the people, eh, they're, they're not ready <laughs> even to do that, to get the book on a deal. But it's a good deal has to be from the position of someone that's informed, that can have that discernment. Yes, and if you're not informed, that means that they're going to be scared because it's usually too good to be true. We've been conditioned, all of us included, that if it's too good to be true, it is. So it's like, you know, you don't have to go to a bookstore, you don't have to expend time, you don't have to Google it. But you can try. You can just say to the person. So, like, some people, they are saying. No, no, I get it. I you get tell it. them, and they, they tell you back. Yeah. They are saying, so you want to say that I can give one dollar and you give me a book? And I say, yes. Mm. They say, okay, let's do it. But most of the people, they say no. Why they say no? Because they don't have knowledge how this will benefit them. Are they too attached to the dollar? Mm, I don't think someone is too... In New York, nobody... I don't think someone is too attached to one dollar. I mean, what you're going to do with, with this one but dollar? The concept of the dollar, the security, the the worry, the fear. Uh, as you were previously mentioned, <laughs> I mean, no, as previously it's one dollar. That yeah, people you cannot buy tickets for the metro with one dollar. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, Just the point is, you don't appreciate what you get for this one dollar. That's why you think one, my one dollar is more valuable than what I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. So yeah. basically, that means ignorance. You don't see, you don't appreciate. And it's not so much the dollar, I think, like the exact quantitative number. Because someone could understand the value, the intrinsic yes. value that they're going to exchange. Is the question and still give more. Like someone yes. could have gone to yes. and give them 50 Yes, some people give 5, carry. 10, 20, 50. Yeah. The point is, the, if the person uh, appreciates or not, and if he doesn't appreciate, that means he doesn't have knowledge. Ignorance. And ignorance means me, which mode of goodness, uh, which mode of nature. <laughs> it's not goodness and it's not passion. Which one? Ignorance. ignorance. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than I do. Um, um, this is something to quickly say. You know, you're talking about this one, it reminds me when I saw years ago in uh, Bertrand de Sidi, it said, live is evil spelled backwards. So like if someone's going forward, but then backwards, kind of like, you know, sort of evil. So I don't know. And then, uh, and then, continuing that, I want to tell you, it's wrong. Um, 
if you add a D, lib to backplace is double. And then another thing I want to say, I want to put on the WhatsApp group, was that uh, I saw Golden Shovel on 9th Street, Amy, she put the book for the customers to read, the Christian book, and then the other day I distributed like some from wholesale, well, we didn't like it for the job in Brooklyn, uh, I'm close to what's the Queens, but anyway, because the little free library, so I distributed books, so I was distributing books, um, uh, Bhagavad Gita's and uh, the Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. you know, the first, you know, one-page contest, she put it like, like put it the only book around for the customers to read again. And the last thing I want to say is that my nephew and one of my nephews in Honolulu, so he's like so happy about the Bhagavad Gita because he's like, this is the best book of the ones you mailed. And um, he goes to the temple sometimes now oh. in Honolulu. He writes Harry Bowl now, and like he's like like two paragraphs. Last he's night. Krishna Bhakta. <coughs> I'm, I'm gonna start reading it tonight. Like, this is someone that was kind of atheist for a while and seeking. And now it's like, well, how old is he? Said Krishna, nine? my nephew. Oh, he's 31. Oh, 31. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry, that's all. Right. Like, for example, Shiva Prabhupada said, if someone just touches one of my books, not buy, not read, not live according to, just touches, his human form of life, next life is guaranteed. Than degrade, but we don't know that, and because of that, people they are not ready to invest. Okay, so charity and goodness performed willingly, you want to do it as a duty, means you don't want anything in return. Proper time, proper place to a worthy person with no expectation of return. What means worthy person? Who is worthy person to receive a charity? Someone who needs, okay, good. But is that the only qualification? Like for example, you walk on the street, you see a drunker and he's telling, give me charity because I need my one, one liter of alcohol liqueur. So he, he has to be in need, but the need should be real need. What means real need? Well, maybe eating or sleeping. Uh, generally, the best is to give charity to a spiritual person. This is the best. From many perspectives. First is because the spiritual people, they are the, the, the head of the society. They will teach people proper values, how to live properly. Teachers. The other thing is that uh, because they are in all this like saintly lifestyle and good qualities, by giving them, by giving your charity to them, you benefit many, many times. Like it is said, if you give charity to a hungry man, you'll get some benefit out of it. Of course, generally it's better always to give food, not money, because okay. the money can go for drugs, for drinking, for many other things. Okay. Always, like if someone want to give him money, if you want to give better, tell him, okay, what do you want to eat? Mm -hmm. Just go and get him some, some vegetarian <laughs> sandwich or whatever, buy him something from the shop. <coughs> so, if you, go, if you give money to someone who is pretending that he is a brahmana, in other words, a teacher, he is not. He doesn't possess the qualities of a brahmana. But he is pretending. For example, he wears the, 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 the dress of a brahmana and he is begging on the street. Just by giving him money, because you respect the status of the society, you get your money back next lifetime. Whatever you gave in charity, they will come back. Fake. How do we know that? We don't. We don't know. We just decide, oh, this is a saintly person, you give to him. But actually, he is not. Still, because you respect that saintly person, you get your money back. So now, if you give your money to a real Brahmana, your money will come back to you tens and hundreds of times more, whatever you gave. Now, if you give the money to a Vaishnava, 
a saintly person who is a Vaishnava, he is a worshiper, of, worshiper of Vishnu, of Krishna, of the Supreme Lord. Your money will come back to you unlimitedly. And this is what Shastra is saying. And if you give charity to a pure devotee, Vaishnava, you go back to the spiritual world. So when we go and distribute books out on the street, we ask people to give donation. And when donation goes for Srila Prabhupada, for his organization, all these people, they are getting immense benefit. They don't know. Maybe they will give like, oh yeah, I have a quarter dollar, I'll give you. So for him, that's joke, that's nothing. But actually this person, he is going back to the spiritual world. It's a question of time. So, to be given a charity to a worthy person on a proper place, proper time, this is, this has uh, amazing power. <coughs> Sometimes the business people, they speak about investment. What is best investment? Yes? Mm -hmm. We say, yeah, best is to invest in land because land is there. Mm -hmm. it cannot change. But the land, the country sometimes can confiscate the land. Mm -hmm. If there is a war or something like that. Like in Bulgaria, communists, they confiscated lots of land. You have, next moment you don't have anymore. And then after the communism fell down, all these people, they went and they start boycotting that they want their land back. Did they it? Most of them, they got it back. It depends. Some parts of the lands, they, they were in the hands of very powerful companies and from them you cannot get it back. But most of them, yes. Whatever belongs to the country itself, it was given back. Some people, they say, oh, the best is to invest in gold. Gold, no problem. Gold, will always, the price of the gold always will go up. But where are you going to hide this gold? Hide it somewhere, someone may come in. Steal it. Under your bed. My shoes. <laughs> what are you going to do? Maybe your girlfriend will steal it in the night. Some people are saying, no, we have to invest in crypto. That's the future. Crypto, it, it will only go up definitely 100% the best. Invest in the meta universes. That's the best investment. But you don't know. You don't know, you may invest, you may invest in Bitcoin and the Bitcoin suddenly from 80,000 can become 40,000 and you lose half of your money. And such a things happen in this material world and it will happen always. You can invest in uh, real estates, the war may happen and the building may not be there anymore. You don't know what will happen. So nothing is sure in this material world. But one thing is sure, if you invest the money by giving them in charity to a saintly person, really a real saintly person, this money, they stay in your bank account forever. You get this money. Intelligent people who are rich from many, many, many generations in India, if you go and ask them, so what's the secret? Why so many generations your family is rich? You see? Because they are constantly making charity, but they know to who to make the charity. They are very particular to who they are giving money. They don't have problem giving money. They have lots of money. They don't have problem, but they know when to give, to who to give, and how to give. That's why the money stays in the family for a very, very long time. Just come back. They are giving it, but actually they are not giving it. It's just the saintly person is like a, like a bank... Uh, What's the word? Someone yeah, someone who is bank agent who is taking your money. And next life, okay, here you go. You get your money again with your interest also. So we should know to who to give charity. And what means charity in, the <coughs> in, in, in spiritual charity? Perform to saintly, uh, saintly person or the Supreme Lord giving uh, for the cause of spreading Krishna consciousness. This is also good charity. Renunciation. 
if we, if we give up our prescribed duties, renounced our prescribed duties, this is renunciation in ignorance. So we have a duty, you don't do it, this renunciation, but actually it's in ignorance. For example, you're a father, you have kids, you don't take for your kids. It's your duty. You have to take care of your kids, your wife, your family. It's renunciation. You renounce some activity, but actually it's renunciation in ignorance. So not to do what you have to do, it's ignorance. Passion means giving up one's prescribed duties out of fear or because they appear troublesome. You are just lazy. You know you have to do it, but it looks too difficult to do it, and then, no, I, I won't do it. Passion. <coughs> Goodness, performing your duties because they should be done without attachment, without taking care of what will be the result. So you know I have to do it and I'll do it. But no, wait a minute, you'll lose if you do it. Oh, I don't care because it's my duty. It means goodness. It's very difficult to find people who think like that nowadays. To go to perform your duty, you'll lose. How is that? Like, for example, someone has to go and give a seminar. And generally, he'll be interested. Okay, how many people will come on the seminar? Oh, they'll come uh, 200 people. Okay, each one will give uh, how much? $50? Okay, then I'll have a good profit. Okay, then I'll go. Passion. Only because he has interest. Now, if someone is in goodness, he has to do something, and apparently he won't have profit from it, still he'll go and do it. Just because it's his duty. This means goodness. Knowledge. Okay, let's see the knowledge in the three modes. What is knowledge in ignorance? Unrelated to the absolute truth. So if something apparently is knowledge but is not connected with the spirituality, actually is ignorance. Not that it won't do anything, but we are missing the point because we can be engaged in so many things and miss the opportunity to get spiritual realization. That's why it's actually ignorance. Mm -hmm. Like you may know how to drive planes, how to build buildings, so many things you may know. But if you don't know why you're doing it, what's the connection of this activity with the Supreme Lord, actually it's ignorance. There's so much of education system for Everything is ignorance, basically, if it's not connected with the... Unless it's connected. Yes. If it's connected with the Supreme Lord, then everything becomes worthy. Mm. You can make clothes. If, it be, if it's connected with the Supreme Lord, it's worthy. You can teach. If it's connected with the Supreme Lord, it's worthy. That's why, for example, there is... Huh? You can do everything. You can do everything. There is one uh, famous Acharya, Jiva Goswami. He wrote a book, grammar book on Sanskrit. All the examples in these books... In this book are with names of Krishna. So this is an example how education <laughs> can be connected. And all the boys who are reading this grammar, they get spiritual benefit because they repeat the names of Krishna. They read the names of Krishna. This is directly connected, but okay, at least indirectly should be connected. Just uh, the students should be taught some values, some uh, development of character not just apparent information. So what when they know this information? Their life will not change in any way. What's the use? The, the, the real purpose of knowledge is change of character, qualities. If the qualities are not there, this is not knowledge. This is ignorance. Mm -hmm. They're not having faith in, in still that what are they Like, for example, you have an ignorant person, but because he is very simple and ignorant, he'll go, he'll en engage in bad activity, but it won't be something big. He'll just buy to drink some liquor or 
smoke a joint or and that's it. You get his bad reaction, but that's it. He harm himself. That's it. Now you have very intelligent person, and he has knowledge. He has training, but he doesn't have a good character. He is not a saintly person. He is not a believer. How much damage he can do with his knowledge? Isn't it what we are seeing nowadays in the world? Mm -hmm. uh, very intelligent people. They can do amazing things. They can create a bombs. They can create a huge businesses. But what's the use of it? It's just exploitation of the people. The more intelligent the person without connection with God, the more, the bigger the problem he creates, mm -hmm. the bigger damage. So better the person to be uneducated. <laughs> better, because then he'll harm a little bit himself, but that's it. He won't harm others. But if he has some brain and he's educated and he's not a good person with a good character, oh my God, big problem. That's why now world is in this situation, because so many apparently educated people, intelligent people, but what are they doing with their lives? And not only this, but they are creating chaos in the lives of others as well. <clears throat> so knowledge in ignorance, meager, unrelated to absolute truth. Seeing one's own work as O in O. Only what I'm doing is important. I don't care for anybody else. That means ignorance. Concern only with bodily comforts. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. <coughs> resembles the knowledge and life of animal. Ignorance. So the, now the polished animals. Now we spoke about the animals. Now we passion, the polished animals. Again animals. Because their lifestyle is a little bit more refined. But actually they live, they do the same thing. They just think again only about eating, sleeping, mating and defending. But they are doing it in a very refined way, very special way. Because <coughs> it's the same thing. Apparently. Gives rise to speculative doctrines, theories, by which one sees the body as the self and consciousness as a byproduct of matter. Excludes the eternal existence of the individual soul within. So someone in passion, the body is all and all. All my endeavor, everything that I do should be connected to the body. There is nothing after that. I will work hard. Why? To do good for my body, to, good, to do good for the bodies of my family members. It's everything is bodily concept of life, passion. And then <coughs> goodness gives rise to a vision of Unifying oneness amongst all living beings, undivided spiritual energy within all bodies. So basically, you start perceiving others as a spiritual beings, not just as their bodies. You don't want to exploit them. Rather, you see the connection. What's the cause for your happiness? It can be cause for their happiness as well. So you want to give, you want to help others one way or the other. This means goodness. Goodness means you don't think so much about yourself. You think more about others. Passion means you think about others only if you have benefit yourself from this. Otherwise, you don't, you don't care. And ignorance means you don't care for anybody else. You just care for yourself. A very selfish lifestyle. From the morning till the evening, you think only about yourself. No, you don't care about anybody else. So that's why Vedic lifestyle means life, lifestyle of sacrifice. It's not a lifestyle of selfishness. You have to find something or someone to sacrifice for. It can be your family, it can be your children, it can be your country, your nation, the humanity. You have to sacrifice for something. It's a life of sacrifice. It's not life of selfish sense gratification. That's the difference between the two. And knowledge in spirituality and <coughs> pure goodness enables one to see all living beings as eternal, individual, spiritual, 
servants of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, and also understanding Krishna. This is the spiritual platform. Action in the three modes. How one acts when he is influenced by the different modes. In ignorance, one is irresponsible, violent, arguing with others all the time. Who are you to tell me what to do? I know very well my job. Get out of here. Violent person, ignorant. Distressing to others. Performed in illusion. His activity is performed in illusion without considering the scripture or future reactions. You just want to do it and you don't care what, what will be the reaction. Someone comes and tells you, but if you do this, this will be the reaction. Leave me alone. I don't care about you. Just, I can do whatever I like. I know better than you. Ignorant. Such an actions, they will make you the great. Action in passion. Perform with false egoism. Great effort to satisfy one's desire to enjoy the fruits of work results in distress. So you have very particular plan. You, you know very well what you want to achieve and you're ready to give anything and everything to get it. But at the end, after achieving it, the result actually is distress, you suffer. You saw such kind of people? They are hard workers. They work very heavy from morning till evening. And you think, okay, you work 10 hours like, like an ass. Now you just go home and be happy. They go home, they are still not happy. Why? Because their mind is so agitated. Mm -hmm. They are working so hard. Their mind cannot focus now on the moment and just get some normal peace, like being with the wife, with the family. They cannot do it. Their mind is already tomorrow. What I have to do tomorrow? And I have to speak with this one and call this one. And oh, I have this problem there. They cannot live in the present. They live always in the future, in the future. So much passion, so much endeavor. Action in the mode of passion. And action in goodness, perform with, according to the scriptural guidance, as a matter of duty, without attachment without experiencing love or hate. One is renowned from the fruits of his action. Result is purification. You feel good, you feel purified. When you act in goodness, you feel good. When you act in passion, you feel miserable. When you act in ignorance, you don't know how you feel because you are in total darkness. <coughs> You just don't feel anything. Very often. Yes. Yes. I whoever is acting right. in general. Like for example, you take drugs. You don't know where are you. You don't know anything. Or get very drunk or something like that. An action in ignorance performed is for the satisfaction of Krishna, for the satisfaction of spiritual master, the devotees. Everything done as an offering for the Lord. So may, you may have your mundane sphere of action, but at least in your consciousness, you have to connect it to Krishna. Okay, Krishna, you put me in this situation. You gave me this job, this duty. Now I'm doing it for your pleasure. Okay, in every reaction, I will try to act in such a way which is pleasing to you. I won't argue with the people. I won't be violent. I will not steal. I will not cheat. I will perform my duty the way how I know it will be satisfying for you. At least that much consciousness we should have. And if possible, whenever it's possible, we can try to engage directly. Let's say go to the temple, do something practical. Help, do some activity for Krishna. This is transcendental action in pure goodness. Worker in the modes. You want to hear about worker? We are all workers. <coughs> Worker in ignorance. Disregards, disregarding scripture. He doesn't care what is written in scripture. What you have to do, what you shouldn't do. I don't care. Materialistic. Obstinate. Cheating. Lazy. Morose. Procrastinating. 
Please go and do this. Oh, now? Oh. No, come on, go and do it. It just, it will take you one minute. Uh, I don't feel now. I'll, later, I'll do it later. Okay, later I'll do it. And then, no later. Tomorrow, not tomorrow. Something which can be done for one minute. Can we spend five minutes? <laughs> yes, worker in the mode of ignorance, sometimes it takes him day to do it. Yeah. Days. And something which can be done in a minute, for him it may take two hours, three hours, five hours to do it. Yeah, Just the, this sense. mode, this mode makes you Free. act in this way. Yeah. Yes. For example, you have to do something, it takes one minute, but because you are in ignorance, you do it in such a way that you damage it, you spoil it, and then it will take you so much more endeavor to fix it again. Hours and hours and hours. I saw this personally. Sometimes, like for example, you have, you have to make a simple hole in the wall. It will take 30 seconds. But because you are in ignorance, you do something wrong. You do it on the wrong place, or you do it, you do it too heavy, and then you damage the wall, or you do it on the wrong uh, angle, and then, for example, the, 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 the painting after that cannot be hanged because it will fall down. You do something wrong, and then you open so much problem. And then you start yelling and screaming and like three hours and you don't want to do anything and you just go, okay, let me go and eat. I don't care about this. And someone else should fix it. And then three hours after that, you come back again and you think what to do now. And then you have to fill the hole and then you have to try to make another one. Ignorance. Just it's something very simple, but because you are not in the right mode, to take so much time and, and, and problems to do it. So that's why if some, some, at some point, if some of you has personal businesses, check out your people. Don't get people in ignorance. That's my advice. At least in passion. Because, okay, these guys, they are at least very active. Just you have to canalize, put in the, uh, ch channelize their, their energy. They have energy. They are ready to do. Just you have to show them where to put their energy and how to, to put it. People in ignorance, oh my God, it will take you so much time just to start making them active. Which what? The yes. <laughs> so, if you have to get people working for you, be careful with the ignorant ones. Choose wisely. Yes, choose wisely. Passion attached to the work and its fruits, desiring to enjoy them, greedy, envious, impure, moved by sorrow and joy. They may look, worker in the passion, he may look paka, like he can be very nicely dressed, mm. he, everything top, but actually he is impure mm. because he may not be taking shower regularly and so on. But in an artificial way, all this is covered very nicely. The, how you say? The, mask. yeah, the mask, the, uh, Yeah, the, the, the appearance is kind of fine. Everything looks fine. Everything is... Because he has particular goals that he, he wants to achieve. But actually, his lifestyle is not pure. If you go in his private life and see his habits, his character, it's Great. total mass. Everything is total mass. There you go. Mm -hmm. Krishna knows. That's all that is. Krishna knows, yeah. yes. Goodness, worker in goodness, free from material attachment, pride and ego, enthusiastic always, ready to resolve the problems, unwavering in success or failure. So no matter what's going on, he's very enthusiastic. I'll, I'm going to do it. I'll do it. But no, actually, actually, if you think about it, you won't have a big profit out of it. I don't care. I said I'll do it. I gave a word, I'll do it. That's goodness. You just do it because you have to do it. You don't care. Success, failure, uh, profit, non-profit, you don't care. Goodness. And worker in pure goodness, 
surrenders the results of his work to Krishna, takes shelter of Krishna, fully conscious of Krishna. Okay, let's go to two, three more. Fast. Happiness. Happiness is very interesting. You want to know happiness in a different mode? Yes. Yeah. Happiness in ignorance. <coughs> it's a blind to self-realization. Mm. Delusion from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Derives from sleep, laziness and illusion. Mm. Oh, you are happy, but you are happy from what? Because, oh, I slept so nicely, 16 hours. Mm -hmm. Now I'm so happy. Or you are happy because today you d didn't have to do anything. That's why you are <laughs> happy. It's happiness. Mm -hmm. huh? How boring that must be. Well, apparently like person, like person, like person in ignorance doesn't think like that. Actually, he is very happy that today he doesn't have to go anywhere and do anything. Just whole day from morning to evening I watch TV and not do anything. The Italians and the traumatized. Maybe. <laughs> Happiness in ignorance. So happiness derived from sleep, from laziness, from illusion. In passion, happiness in passion, derived from the contact between the senses and their objects. Nectar in the beginning, poison at the end. Epitomized by the sex enjoyment. Why sex enjoyment? Yes, it's, uh, it's coming from the contact between the senses and objects of the senses. So what's the problem with that? It's temporary. So passion means temporary. Very fast, but very... Uh, it's over. Yes, it's over immediately. <coughs> and the other problem with the passion is it starts very nicely, but it doesn't finish nicely. So. In the beginning, it's very enjoyable, but after that creates problem. Like, for example, you have amazing food, passionate food. So when you are eating it, at that moment, immediately you feel extreme enjoyment. Your tongue is really, wow, that's so tasty. But actually, because it's a passionate food, after that, goes the other way around. It creates not happiness, it creates distress. That's passion. What is goodness compared to poison in the beginning but nectar at the end? Because it involves controlling the mind and the senses but awakens one to self-realization. So it's in the beginning it's like a poison because you have to do something that actually is not so palatable. It doesn't bring immediate happiness. Like for example, you have to control your senses. You have to get up 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, it's not so palatable. It's kind of difficult to do it. Your senses are boycotting. Why so, so early? Just sleep another two hours. Your mind is like, no, are you crazy to get up 4 in the morning? Come on, just be a normal guy. Go to sleep a little more. Mm -hmm. So it's so difficult. You have to fight with the mind and the senses so it's difficult that's why it's like a poison but once you are able to conquer the mind and the senses your life becomes nectar because that's the greatest happiness the moment you can handle the unrestricted desires of your mind who are constantly coming like a storm and the moment you are ready to give your senses only what is needed not what they want you'll be the happiest person in this world. There will be no person more happy than you. But that's very difficult to do. Because first you have to go through the moment of controlling. And people, they don't want to do that. Just obtain freedom. Yes. They want instant happiness mm -hmm. without any restriction. That's why all the successful people, let's say the, the guys with the big companies and who wrote these success books, many of them, they are saying, Delay sense gratification. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a successful guy, delay. Mm -hmm. Your mind will tell you, first enjoy, then go to do your duty, your job. No, other way around. Mm -hmm. For you go do, do whatever you have to do. Later you can enjoy. 
This is the culture that they have for their mind. This makes them successful because always job is before the enjoyment and that's why they become successful. You reward yourself also. Yeah. Yes, no problem. It, they take it, it won't yeah. disappear. It's still there. It's waiting. The sense gratification is waiting. But let's not do it now. Let's first do the important thing. Then later, uh, I'll come to this point. These are the successful, materially successful people. And of course, the person in mode of goodness, he has similar way of thinking, but he's not motivated from material profit. He's motivated from his spiritual advancement, his purification. Yes, regulated habits of eating, of sleeping, uh, good association with good people, all these things. It's restriction. So apparently, for the normal people, it will look like a poison. But for this guy, he knows. No, because I know if I spend my day in, in, in this way or in the other, I know what's the difference. Yeah. So, yeah, some exercises. So that's why he's motivated to do it, because he has experience. He tried one way, the other way. He knows how, f how happy he feels in one situation, in the other situation, and he is choosing. Well, this is better. Yes. It seems industrialization is parallel to the deepening of Kali Yuga. Because he would say, oh, the normal person needs it. But that's in context of the time. Because hundreds of years ago, the normal person would be getting up with the dawn and going to bed when the sun went down because of farming. Like, that's the healthiest time. It matches like that. So. Um, that's what was oh glory! The more industrialized we are, oh glory to the modern civilization! Yeah. <laughs> right. Now we can just go to sleep at one o'clock in the night, no yeah. problem. And there are so many nice things to do: eat chips, oh, popcorns, watch seven movies. So many nice things to do. Oh glory to the modern yeah. civilization! Yeah. Can you like plan again? We we can have food delivered to us. Yes. Maybe? You know how crazy that is. You may even you may even rent a person to come and feed you. No need you to move. You can't just stay like that and someone will feed you. Everything. <laughs> Some uh, doctor was saying that before people by, by, by living in a village before people they had to every day the ladies they had to make uh, a, a dough for a bread. Mm -hmm. They had to wash clothes. They had to go and get some water, mm -hmm. drinking water. So they were doing all these activities. And apparently the life of the people was more difficult, but they were not getting so sick mm -hmm. because of all this activity. Mm -hmm. And now people, they have all these facilities, easy way of life. And apparently their lifestyle is better, but they don't do neither of those things because everything is ready for you. We are living in a uh, button civilization. Mm -hmm. Everything is a button. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and because of that, and because of that, the result is that people are getting more sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, the time that before they had to actually spend it in exercises because you have to get out the water or wash the clothes or chop the wood. Mm -hmm. Now, this time, they are spending it in a hospital mm -hmm. because they are not ready to live close to nature. Well, yeah, so much people, they exercise with the remote control for Netflix. That's not, but what you just said uh, happened and in Ireland. Excuse me, just I want to say something else. And those, those people who are actually uh, intelligent, they understand wait a minute, if I want to be healthy, I need some exercise in my life. And then they go and they just <laughs> push the iron up and down, up yeah. and down, up and down. And they pay for this, $250 per month. Wow. So it's the same thing. The intelligent guys, they came to the same conclusion. Wait a minute, I need some chopping of uh, wood. And then he goes to the fitness and the instructor says, okay, now you have to make this move and just exactly you are chopping wood. And you pay me $250 because I'm giving you this knowledge. Yeah, well, true. buddy, better get a house, go on a village and do the same thing. <laughs> when the tractor came to Ireland, but this would apply to anywhere, um, the health part-wise of the farmers, 
got lessened, depleted, because mm -hmm. now he's just in the tractor, maybe even with vices too, instead of like the cows and out there in the fields and doing it. Yeah. It's so true, everything. Yeah. It's more of a sedentary life. Mm -hmm. So that's like exactly. old people live longer if they have purpose. Like the minute that you take a simple task yeah. from brushing their teeth or going for a walk, or it so keeps them. So basically, that means the closer we are to nature, the better. Yeah. Of course, we are like, we can say we are a city people already. We cannot just mm -hmm. change this with a magical stick. But anyway, in your situation, try to associate as much as possible with sattva guna or with spiritual sattva, which means, yes, association with holy people, mm -hmm. spiritual places. But apart from this, the, ra the rest of your time, because, okay, you are coming here, what, once a week or two times a week for one, two, three hours. So, so much more time during the week. Try to spend every day some um, amount of time in a sattvic way, not so much in a tamasic or rajasic way. Just go, get up in the morning, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Just make two hours walk. Mm -hmm. Just walk, chant, or go to the park, read a book, mm -hmm. make some yoga exercises, do something sattvic. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the passion and ignorance just catches us and smashes our consciousness like anything. So violent, it smashes your consciousness. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no choice. That perspective ideal in relation with like the reality that people are, you know, certain, I feel like it's different parts as we've broken them down, that they're like in different speeds or something, let's say. And they're all like simultaneously going as we go throughout life. But, you know, like you can work on so, like so many at certain times to get them up to speed to an ideal perspective, but the reality is some are already like preconditioned with, as you're saying, our society, like with in Ireland, just people are going to sleep, you know, or how, can you elaborate more on how you said controlling, um, like, is that just restraint? And then in certain departments, and then over time that develops stronger? Or? Controlling, it's a natural part of life. Without controlling, you cannot achieve anything. Mm -hmm. Question is why we are controlling and what we are controlling. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you cannot be a successful person materially even. We don't speak about spiritual. Materially, if you don't have control in your life. Mm -hmm. Show me a successful person which cannot control his senses. You may say, well, he just got uh, from the lottery mm -hmm. five million. But if he can, cannot control his senses, that means tomorrow again he'll be poor, poor guy. Mm -hmm. He will spend the money for one year, guarantee, because he doesn't have control. So success means control. If you don't have some control in your life, it's not possible to be... And then how is that different or similar to like the controller, as we've mentioned before? Krishna. Yeah. But well, like the illusion of us being in control. Differ difference, difference is that the controller, the Supreme Lord, he creates the rules that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. And now we can follow them voluntarily or we can follow them by force. Mm -hmm. If we follow them voluntarily, this will make us successful. Sattva guna. If we don't want to follow them, then the modes will force us to follow them. But it will be with some pain and stress and disturbance in our life. But anyway, we'll follow the rules of God. Nobody can cross the rules of God. Just the question is, are you pious enough to do it on your own or otherwise you'll be forced to do it? Like someone may say, I'll never die. No, oh, you will die because everybody who is in this world, he dies. Someone may say, I will never get sick. you get sick. Mm -hmm. you get old. Someone may say, I will never lose my money. You will lose your money. Mm -hmm. Believe me, sooner or later, later so you when you become 80, 90. <laughs> because these are the laws of God. You come here, you try illusory to enjoy the resources of this world, but then at some point you go. The way you came, the way you, this is the way how you go. You cannot get anything with you. 
So these are the, the, the rules of God. Intelligent people, they get it. That's why they become detached. Those who are not so intelligent, they are attached. So, so the successful, not intelligent people, they become rich. And the not successful, non-intelligent people, they stay poor. But actually, both of them are non-intelligent because they are extremely attached to something that they cannot have. You work like a crazy whole life for something that you won't have. What's the use? Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling you, okay, George, go outside on the street. There is a diamond shop. You see this diamond on the, uh, the, yes. on the glass? Okay. So if you work next 50 years of your life, if you work 10, uh, 10 hours a day, I will give you the opportunity to look at this diamond through the window and you can consider it yours. Okay. By looking at it? What's the problem? It's, it's yours. It's never yours, actually. What do you mean? It's there. You can watch it and consider it yours. Okay. Just you have to work 50 years, 10 hours a day. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. I think he addressed the question in short. Hold on. Yeah. Is no, this no. a trick question, though? Of or course, of course, it's a tricky question. But this is the situation. Years to then just be able to observe the diamond. Yes. Or do anything with the diamond. No, no, do just. It's yours. It's yours. It's, it's just there. Just watch it. <laughs> okay. So you're just telling me I'm gonna get a okay. When Good. I'm or I I have a diamond upstairs. Please work for me next fifty years. I will give you this diamond to watch it. No problem. Ready? Are you ready? Ready to work for me for fifty years, ten hours a day? I will give you to to look on my diamond but whenever you want. Diamond. You don't want, oh, you are from the <laughs> intelligent ones, I from the you're detached saying, ones. To be unattached from, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, you beat me. <laughs> no, there's no way. Ah, but actually, I don't even know name of <laughs> actually, that, that, that's what's going on in this world. This is the reality. People, they think that something is theirs and they're ready to work hard for it, but actually, it's not theirs. It's no one's. It's no one's. It it's belongs Krishna. to Krishna, yeah. but it's not, definitely not theirs. It's because we identify with if it. Them. If it was ours, why are you losing it? Exactly. If it's really yours, you will not lose it. If you are losing it, that means it's not yours. Yeah, yeah. What other thing would people work for if it wasn't for material things? Hmm? Can you come up with another scenario where people work for, work for things for the next 50 years? But it's um, not for material or yes. sense Family. gratification. For example, you meet the love of your life. Mm. Not and she, person. And, no, she, not and, she person. and she and she and she comes to you Anything. and she says, If you work for me next fifty years absolutely not. Ten hours a day. Dude, I already stopped the question. I'm already on to the next person. I'll give you a kiss. Yeah. And and you are saying and you're saying Shoe sure, man, I'll do it easily. No. I'm going. I want you to love me unconditionally without that kiss. But or the exchange. Is this what we are seeing every yeah. day outside on the street? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Just kiss and hug and you're ready to work. No. Fifty no. years. No. no. And if you're not ready to I saw, I saw that with my dad and like you're an idiot. Like okay. and a lot of you know Anyway you ask for another example. You can't take it with you. Which obviously, you can't take it with you. It's a musical event. Also, mm. um, yeah, two paragraphs so back, a friend of mine came to this temple twice, Western Pee, she passed. Mm. I happened to have my symbol uh, when I got hospital, and she passed too because I was going to go to Atlantic Avenue. Mm -hmm. I know, and this was like February 1st. Anyway, her widow said that they lived on. They, and he still resides on the fifth floor in Brooklyn. And he says, and they're in their 70s, that all the people he knows that lives on the walk-up, fifth and sixth floors, they're all like healthy 80-year-olds and stuff. Amazing. Build the stairs for decades. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's what he's true. done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. 
So the elevator huh. can vent your health too, I guess, you know? That, Genius, that luxury, the comfort, but you, there's always an opportunity. You know, Jack, yeah. I, mean, I got the, I got, I got the fourth floor lock up and that made me so lucky. I, <laughs> I like this one. Okay, so let's, let's finish the topic. <laughs> Times of the day. Times of the day. Evening and night is in the mode of? Ignorance. Correct. Mm. Evening and night. Mm. That's why generally devotees, they try not to stay too late at evening and night because then anyway your consciousness is influenced by ignorance, you won't be really efficient. Better just go and take ni nice rest. Daytime is in passion. That's why everybody is very active during the day. Naturally, passion. While the sun is up, everybody is very passionate, running here and there. And early morning is in in goodness. That's the best. That's the best time for spiritual advancement. That time, our mind is the most peaceful. It's ready for meditation, to think about life, mm -hmm. analyze it properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then pure goodness, spiritual, is when? When we die? Hmm? No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, pure goodness, like transcendental goodness? Early it's to bed, early to rise. Before the morning? What is that called? Before oh, the morning. <laughs> pure time? Twilight or something? Any time that one serves the Supreme Lord. I was on the road there. It doesn't matter. It can be in the morning, it can be noon, it can be evening. If you serve Krishna, that's pure goodness. You are not under the influence of the modes. You are above the modes. You are transcendental. You are on the spiritual platform. That's a very important point. Location. Ignorance. Pub. Brodo. Casino, slaughterhouse, butchers, passion, city, town, goodness, forest, pure goodness. Anywhere what? Correct. Any place where devotional service is performed. This is spiritual. You can be in the city, you can be in the village, you can be in the forest, you can be even in the pub. If you are singing Hare Krishna and people are hearing, this is spiritual world. Karaoke night. <laughs> <laughs> even, Washington, even Washington Square during the joint festival can oh. become the spiritual world. Yeah. If there is a chanting of Hare Krishna. Okay, so more or less these are the points. Just the idea was again to show how everything that we are doing, consciously or unconsciously, we are associating with one of the three modes. So if we are doing something on a material platform, at least let's try to cultivate, to associate with goodness. Because this will make our life good without many problems, without anxieties, without diseases, without suffering. That's materially. Now, if we can spiritualize some part of our life, even better. Something. But these parts of our life we cannot, this time of our life that we cannot spiritualize, at least let's keep connection mainly with the mode of goodness. And we will see a big change in our life. If our habits are connected with the mode of goodness, we will see a big change in our life. I'm sure you are already seeing this whole lifestyle, trying to get a kind of little bit in the morning, do something spiritual, read some spiritual book, be a vegetarian, associate with people who are more in sattva guna, mm -hmm. in goodness. Already you see the difference, mm -hmm. but if you put a little bit more endeavor, you will see even bigger difference. Thank you very much. Can I take a picture of that? Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki.